Welcome to the Successful Athletes Podcast presented by Trainer Road, where we interview successful athletes to make you a faster cyclist. This week, we are joined by Octavio Flores Quintero down in Mexico. How are you doing, Octavio? I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I really appreciate you reaching out on this. Personally, it was really cool because you you did this really cool event called Bayartazo, and we're going to talk a lot about that. But you did this event, and I've actually ridden on a small portion of that course, so it was really cool to see that and have like this point of relevance. Uh, I'm I'm really excited sure. to dig into that today. Um, of course learn about your process of training and how you improved. Um, you raised your FTP all the way from 135 up to 203. Um, and also learn a lot. Yeah. Way to go. By the way, you have some big plans after this, but I think that probably the best place to start is to talk about your background in sport and how you got into cycling. Sure. Well, I've been, you know, cycling casually, but probably mo- mo- most of my life, but I would say it was about 10 10, 11 years that I start to get a little bit, you know, to go from the regular bike uh, to purchase the first bike with double suspension. Uh, I have always been mountain bike. That's what I like the most. And that's what I enjoyed uh, the most. Uh, and it was 10, 10, 10, 11 years. And it has been growing little by little by many different uh reasons i would say at first uh, there are more people more friends uh, joining the sport there are now many many way, way many more uh, uh trails and places where you could safely go and so that 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 kept uh, you know my interest growing you know over time and it was really until uh, i would say about three years ago that i went all the way uh, into into cycling I I got a much better mountain bike, but <laughs> that was important. Uh, that kept me motivated, and I also at some point decided to also get into road biking. Mm. Uh, in and initially, the reason to get into sport biking, into uh, road biking, sorry, uh, it was it was because I heard, I read that it was going to make me a little bit better in in with my mountain bike. So that was uh, that was the reason we were. I was reading about cadence, uh, and you know, mm. I decided to jump into road biking. And I, you know, surprisingly, I, I was amazed. I, I also joined another group, and I kept riding both bikes now every week. So how cool! <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> what about the um, cycling culture down in Mexico? You're from uh, Guadalajara specifically. Guadalajara. Yes. So a uh, part of Mexico. Um, that's, uh, that's, I guess, uh, maybe you can break that down for us because that's one thing. Not a lot of athletes. We have like Pedro Ulloa right now who, who mm-hmm. won a world cup this year in mountain biking. That was awesome. Uh, really cool to see an athlete that we get to see at our local races win a world cup. Uh, I say local down in Southern California, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but, but then I don't believe that a lot of people understand the, the cycling culture within Mexico because they're not familiar with it. So what's it like there in Guadalajara? Lots of trails, lots of group rides, races. Guadalajara is on the West Coast and it's actually uh, it, the West Coast. You will see the Rocky Mountains actually going all the way down almost to Central America. So Guadalajara is right beneath the, what you call the, the these Rocky Mountains. It's a mad high city. And uh, we have nowadays we have El Bosque de la Primavera, which is like a federal preserve, uh, uh, which it's amazing. It's beautiful and it's just right by the city i mean it's really like 10 minutes drive i mean that that crazy is so close uh and for many years i i I was i will speak for myself uh, because there are uh, there are some older people that will say that i'm crazy but for many years i never realized that we have the, the the el bosque the forest so so close to home uh but it was until i started like riding a little bit more and more that i you know, uh, got into the into the forest, and it's amazing. And nowadays, well, we have clubs, we have all sorts of uh, teams, and and even from the young young generation, like the 10, 12 year old guys, already like going and practicing downhill, uh, for example, <laughs> trails, of course, uh, and enduro. So it has grown. Amazingly, especially over the past five years, 
for many reasons. One of the things that I believe uh, has happened is that over the past few five, five six years, uh, most of the major uh, si uh, bicycle brands came and start like sponsor, uh, sponsor, sponsorships, uh, not only for athletes, but also for races, uh, for different events. So nowadays you see events happening almost every weekend in different parts of the of the not only Guadalajara but around for example there is a uh, Michoacán which is a state nearby it's amazing it's just absolutely beautiful what you uh, the forest that you have uh, there and then close to the beach uh, close to Puerto Vallarta so, and, and the state of Nayarit which is really close to Guadalajara it's just amazing so now we have several events uh, happening not only mountain bike but also uh, road biking and you know, several, not only, uh, uh, you know, short races, but what we are seeing now, it's uh, like longer races. Uh, these type of races where you could have two or three days and you do some camping in between. And, you know, that 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 seems to be uh, getting way more traction than what it used to be. So it's evolving quickly, evolving. And and, and especially this past year with, uh, with, with COVID, Basically, the whole country ran out of bicycles. There are no bicycle stores are basically <laughs> <Sure>. empty. <laughs> right. No bicycles. Everybody jumped into a bicycle. And uh, now you see quite a, quite a crowd uh, down in the road or, or, or in the mountain. That's awesome. Uh, fantastic. And, and right now you're actually in Puerto Vallarta. And if you hear the waves crashing, it's because he's literally on the beach right now with the podcast. So hopefully, almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you hear that, that's some good background ambiance for all of you. Um, so let's quickly, um, what we're going to do is talk about Vallartazo, this event, and you can kind of explain what it is, and then we'll jump right into how you started training for it. So can you give us kind of like the, the very basics of what Vallartazo is in terms of uh, distance and, and, and time and how it works? Sure, Vallartazo is actually, it's a, that event has been taking place for many years now. I, I have friends that have done that like over 20 years. And initially it was a, a, a trip in between the city of Guadalajara and, uh, and Puerto Vallarta. In the beginning, uh, it was basically uh, unknown. We didn't have a GPS. We didn't have a, you know, <laughs> any sort of help. So you were just asking. Uh, and, and I have joined one of those uh, old teams. And I tried to, to do Vallartazo once before, not this one. And I, I couldn't complete it uh, because I got uh, injured. I broke my ligament, my uh, cross ligament in the uh -huh. middle of the trip. So I couldn't complete it. That was three years ago. Uh, but but this team has been doing uh, the Vallartazo for over uh, close to 20 years. And what they, the stories that you hear uh, from, from back then, it's amazing. I mean, they they didn't have any anything, but, you know, the sun or, or you could ask people, hey, we want to go that way, that way, that way. And they kept telling you and just just keep going, going. Wow. That uh, that has grown, obviously, nowadays, Vallartazo is a very, you know, every weekend we have Vallartazos happening from different points. There are about four to five different routes. Okay. I personally took this time uh, one that is called El Cabro. I, I, uh -huh. I, I shared some, some pictures because you go through and pass, you know, a big, uh, like a goat, <laughs> uh, face uh, in the mountains, and that's why they call El Cabro. But there are some other uh, uh, routes, and nowadays, uh, not only bikes, although it starts with bikes, also now uh, four wheel drive, and you know, all of this off road world has also oh, wow. take some notice. So now you in some cases, you compete with the, uh, you know, to share the road because uh, now it's famous and all over Mexico, they usually come in the months of uh, August, September, October and November because that's uh, right uh, right uh, when the, the weather is beautiful, it's not so hot and you get quite a bit of rain. So mm -hmm. it gets muddy and it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit more interesting. Sure. Uh, so the one that I took this year uh, and the one that I prepared for over, I would say, six months, I was so scared because the first time that I tried 
I, bro I broke my ligament. So I said, no, this time I have to finish and I will take a different mindset uh, and training and everything so that I could complete it uh, without any, you know, without falling or without anything because uh, the terrain is quite, it's complicated. It's, uh, you don't see, there is no one around, only local people, but very few people living yeah. in, in the mountains. So basically it's a uh, bridging roads and and it's a uh, it has it's some complication thing. but it's a, but it's a very nice uh, a very nice one so you start roughly a mile high and then you work your way down to the beach but when you do that it's not as if it's a descent looking at the profiles it's a lot of climbing that you do with that throughout yes, this I, i'm glad that you you brought that uh, uh that thing over time you, uh, it has evolved uh because now uh, for example the one that I took we no longer start in Guadalajara what we do is we go to an, a mountain town called uh Mascota so Mascota has become like the capital of uh, for, for all Vallartazos is is a, a town uh, up there uh, very very nice very small uh, town and everybody basically arrives there and when you get there, you see, you know, full 18-wheel trucks full of, uh, like, mountain bikes or motorcycles uh, cross or, you know, all sorts wow. of ATMs. And in our case, our group was about 115. So they, wow. you, you put 115 bikes in, in a truck uh, and send the bikes and, you know, every everything that you need to, to do the camping apart. And then most of the people take a, a, like a bus ride from Guadalajara to, to the city of Mascota, which is pretty much where, the, where every, everybody departs from. Not everyone uh, comes from Guadalajara because, as I mentioned, it's a nationwide, uh, it's not a race, let's say it's just a... Uh, sure. Yeah, it's a... How, how would you say uh, when it's not a race? It would be like uh, an event or like a tradition ride. that people do, a ride, yeah. Exactly, yep. yeah, it's a ride. So we have people from Mexico City, from Monterrey, from all of the other major cities, and, and they all arrive into 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 Mascota uh, by, in different ways. What sure. we did with my group, a smaller group, not the 115, we decided to, most of them ride overnight, and the bus arrives and they depart. Everybody departs basically once you arrive. And the the bus takes about five hours from Guadalajara to Mascota. What, what a smaller group of people, uh, we decided to go one night, one day before so that we could have some, some rest. Sure. So uh, much better. Uh, so we took uh, uh, this ride before the, most of the team and we were able to, you know, to rent a, a place, have a good a good sleep and just jump in the morning. And we were there by the time everybody was arriving. So this is an 86 kilometer route or 53 miles over super rough, raw, rugged terrain um, that, that you do mm -hmm. with a ton of different people. You climb roughly... 6,200 feet over that too. Um, exactly. and the cool part is you descend right down to Puerto Vallarta at the end, which is like exactly. everybody's dream, <laughs> which That's is amazing. Actually, yeah. It's amazing. Now I have to say, I, uh, uh, even though we go from the, mo from high up in the mountains, all the way to the, to the beach, as you just said, it goes up and up and down, up and down. And, and the climb is actually quite steep. Some could do the whole trip in one day, but the, tri the, the group that we did, uh, that we uh, took, they decided to, you know, to enjoy the, themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. We invite, or they invited actually, there were a lot of ladies, even kids, uh, 16, 17 year old uh, boys. Uh, so by dividing, by splitting almost half and half, was uh, very nice because it allows you time to, you know, to do some grilling in the sure, afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> we we jumped. Uh, we did our camping ground was set right beside a, a, a river uh, that was extremely cold, by the way, <laughs> extremely cold. So everybody, uh, you know, had time to to jump into into this wild river. Very nice, uh, cold, and then we did some. Uh, 
grilling on, on the side and we enjoy being in the middle of you know in the middle yeah. of the mountains and it was it was fairly nice uh but it it goes up and down up and down up and down uh, and the second day even though you mostly arrive into Puerto Vallarta uh, it has some some deep, quite uh, deep, uh, how say, uh, uphill, uh, steep uphills, yeah, uh, steep uphills uh, that that force you to to do the best. The good thing about uh, going in groups like like this is they have all these, uh, you know, b vehicles where you have uh, in case something happens to your bike, they have everything, you know, even spare. Uh, tires or they could use some easy fixings let's put it that way and you also uh you do not need to carry your your tent or your meals or or, or even your clothes because they they take care of that and oh, nice. and they do they keep supplying you know water or or gatorade or whatever uh, so How that's cool. good and 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 halfway through each day they provide some fruits in the middle So that's that makes things a little bit easier, obviously, because otherwise you will have to carry the whole thing. And sure, that, you know, that's, that would, that be, would be a little bit more complicated. Yes, sure. I'm laughing inside because I'm thinking about how I look forward to like doing a business park criterium where I just ride around a building for an hour and in, in an industrial park. This sounds just so much better. Um, so uh, let's let's get into your training. So. You mentioned that the previous time you'd done this, you'd torn a ligament. And as a result, you really wanted to change your perspective on this, your outlook, and also take like a structured approach. So is that what, I guess, uh, take us to where you started with Trainer Road? What was your FTP? And then which training plans did you pick? I will start even before because I knew I had to do something different. Uh, I decided to go with, uh, start with the smart training and I was looking for every single app in the marketplace. So I did uh, quite a research, uh, quite a bit indeed. Uh, that's when I start listening to do, uh, the podcast and I became immediately, you know, hooked into the, into, you know, the conversation with the coach, uh, with Amber, with yourself. And for me, that was, uh, like night and day, because by looking, uh, the way I was looking, uh, cycling before, you know, I always enjoy, always have fun, but never from the technical point of view, you know, from a more structural, uh, point of view. But even though I was already listening, uh, to the podcast, I, 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 I said, no, I have to do uh, the whole enchilada. <laughs> uh, so I, uh, so I went and, and, and did that research and even tried one month, uh, several different, uh, applications. And in the end, I, I, I left the trainer road until the end, I have to say, uh, <laughs> because I, I, I kind of uh, knew, but anyways, uh, in the end, I decided to, you know, to stick with trainer road because of the, the plan, the structure plan I chose. You know, I was a beginner. I said, well, I will put, uh, I'm a beginning. And I think I went for like uh, five to seven hours uh, a week, mm -hmm. a beginning. And I chose Enduro. Yeah. Uh, an Enduro race, because that was pretty much what I was going to, uh, going to make. Uh, and that's basically uh, what I, uh, what I do. I personally enjoy uh, quite a bit, not only training uh, with the, 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 the roller, but also reading all, all sorts of tips, uh, you know, information that uh, it's helpful. And it's actually, it, it teach you it, uh, quite a bit more than just, you know, cycling, cycling, cycling. Sure. Uh, so I enjoyed, I learned and, and, you know, uh, do uh, an exercise. And at the same time, sometimes uh, I, when I didn't have anything to read, uh, I, I listened to a podcast. So I kept the learning process going. <laughs> and even, even at, in the office, I kept listening to some of the podcasts. And to me, as I was uh, uh, mentioned before, it was, to me, it made a uh, huge difference because the sort of tips that I uh, hear from you and from the rest of the team are amazing. And once you are up there, that's when, <laughs> that's when I start like getting these flashbacks about, you know, how, 
the, the small tips, like a micro relaxing your muscles while you are mm-hmm. on a steep uh, uphill uh, road. So those little things made, uh, you know, huge difference in, in this case in, in, in the race. And I kept, uh, kept thinking about training road <laughs> all the way. But furthermore, the the uh, ID, I, I I change everything. I start like uh, waking up like at six o'clock in the morning and doing pretty much two or three times a week, uh, ninety minutes uh, mostly. Uh, the uh, the you know the the program and I follow the program in the beginning. To me, I thought it was going to be easy. Uh, I was not so familiar to uh, with the intervals. I have mm. to be honest, uh, but as I kept going from 135 FTP and then I, I quickly went into 153. That was quick. Wow. Uh, and then the next, I, I, that's when <laughs> when I started realizing that it was going to get a little bit more difficult. And it was all the way, almost two weeks before my race that I, I hit the 203 and... To me, I, it made me so happy because I I saw the you know the ha- the evolution and I also mm-hmm. saw the evolution on my you know, on my I, I lost some weight of course but uh, in the power that I was able to produce when when I was going on my on my mountain bike in the La Primavera for example I was able to you know go up or down uh, in places that I wasn't able to do it before mm-hmm. and to go even further you know in for many years i was doing you know 20 25 kilometers uh, on a ride and i and that made me extremely happy but uh, suddenly i was making 40 60 and and i didn't feel that i was like exhausted uh, mm. so no i saw the difference like 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 this so how cool it's super satisfying to see those sort of results like the real like the ftp gains are awesome and that's what we use to measure the improvement. But really the real reason we're doing it is because we want to be faster cyclists and, and being faster also just, I feel like it makes, especially with mountain biking, it makes everything so much more enjoyable too. You can just experience more trail and do more. Um, you mentioned that intervals were tough and a few other things I, I want to ask you, cause this is a question that I feel like all of us should ask ourselves. Uh, and if you're new to structured training, you're probably thinking that everybody else has an easy time with structured training and you're the only one that has the issues, but we all face challenges with it. What weren't you good at in the training process? Like what was really hard for you? Was it, um, long intervals or was it nutrition? Was it sleep? Was it motivation? What was hard in the training wow. process for you? Actually it was, a bit of everyone and interesting that you mentioned because for example i never took care of the sleep time really mm-hmm. i was it i was always like okay I, I will go to sleep and then pff, I, I have to wo- uh, wake up in the morning and i never measure anything mm-hmm. it was until like two three months before that i start like taking care of that saying why would i kept like reading a book for example uh um, mm-hmm. Better, you know, because I I, I I no longer have the time that I need, uh, so I switch uh, my uh, the lights and turn and I turn off the lights and put the book aside. And I told my wife, I "Gotta go to sleep." Yeah. Uh, and she hated, indeed. She said, "Oh, you know, I want to keep reading." But anyways, <laughs> uh, she decided uh, uh, then uh, that she was going to buy, you know, one thing for for herself alone. Uh, a little lamp, <laughs> yeah. A little, a little lamp because uh, uh, because she said, "You know, I'm not going to go early <laughs> to sleep because we have never done so." So that's that was number one. That uh, that that's for sure. Mm. Uh, one thing uh, that for me was very difficult. On, I found out that on the long ones, I was able to to keep uh, to keep it for the long on the long ones much better. But it was the small and high the the ones that are uh, way above. Sure. Those are like killers. Indeed, in the office, I remember you know, two or three hours later while walking uh, uh, in the office, I barely go to the office now with the uh, virus. But when I used to go and and in those days i remember feeling my 
my legs like like shaking. <laughs> but it was the yeah. small ones, the small ones that go uh, like go really short and high intensity intervals. Yeah. Exactly. So how did you how did you get better at those? Was it because I mean you 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 obviously you went through the plan. You did a lot of really hard work. And while you may not feel like you're, you know, a, a professional at them compared to some actual professional cyclist, what did you do to manage and to get through them? I, that's when I learned, or that's why I shared that reading the, you know, the text, uh, there is some motivation because it, it was telling me, let's, you know, one shot at the time, one second at the time, you have 20 more seconds and... And without those little beeps and, and you know, two more to go, and I think I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, to make it because, you know, you are alone in your house. I mean, nobody is watching. So uh-huh. what the heck, I, I could just quit. But no, you know, I, that kept me, that motivation uh, part kept me going on those ones. And then I also learned to do, you know, things that I w- was not doing before. Like I remember Ember uh, talking about uh, how to exhale and, and how to t- take deep breaths and how not to move the whole body because I that's what I was doing before. Obviously, it was like, like shaking and moving. And I became, I, w- I would say, not completely efficient, no, but became more efficient in, in just moving the parts that I needed to to move, and then a lo- uh, how I exhale and and, and mm. breathe. That made a, a huge difference to you know overcome this this uh, high. Yeah, indeed, I in the mountain bike. When I have to go through, you know, these quick hills, the one minute, two minute hills, that's when I start realizing that the training was working because before I remember going uphill and just start slow and couldn't finish it ever. So now with the training, uh, you know, I, I didn't have to, you know, to start slow. And I was just able to go all the way to the end because uh, with it, especially once I start doing the two minutes, that's what it takes me pretty much to overcome almost every, you know, hill that I have yep. near home. So yeah, that was enough. That's uh, and it's, I like that you picked enduro for that because of the terrain, since it was constant surges, mm-hmm. it's smart that you did that a lot, even though it wasn't titled an enduro race, it was really smart exactly. of you to actually look at the demands of the course and then match the training with it. So that was a really smart thing you did. Let's talk about the event a little bit more. You mentioned that they had, um, th- that you camped. So what unique things did you have to do because it was a multi-day event? That that's kind of like compared to just doing a single day. It was nice that you had people to, or that you had that support to be able to move or bring like the camping items and stuff. But what was hard? What was unique about it being a two day event? The terrain was actually a. Uh, it was a lot. Uh, that week they, they didn't they didn't get a lot of rain, so it was sandy. It was uh, really uh, really complex because. As you saw on the the train, we had uh, at, at some point. I think we have at, uh, more than ten kilometers going downhill, but it's not like straight. It goes like a, a slalom, like going on on a ski a slalom. So it keeps like going like this, and at oh. the speed that you could gain, it was really difficult uh, because you have to turn like almost one hundred and eighty uh, degrees. Boom, yeah, weekly. And one thing that helped me actually the trainer is that uh, before I did the whole uh, training, the the muscles in my body, I used to um, uh, get tired after like two hours because Mm. of my, the back and and, and the the midsection was not Mm. strong enough to to keep me uh, uh, on top of the bike for that many hours. Uh, And when I was doing this downhill, quite week, uh, even if you don't want, because it's really steep, <laughs> you have to, you, have, you go like this, uh, you have to be really strong in, in the in mm-hmm. mid body and the, the legs to hold the bike, because otherwise the bike keeps like going. <laughs> sure. So you have to control it. And, and that's one thing that I, uh, I also realized 
I was able to, you know, stay up uh, for many hours on 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 the walk, on the bike more than five, if I'm not wrong. So uh, mm -hmm. from that perspective, I remember arriving at the campground, and when I arrived, I, I you know, since I had tried this Vallartazo before and and couldn't make it. The whole time I was thinking, I have to be careful. I have to, uh, you know, uh, I have to be able to arrive to, to the point. And even though I have my GPS and I knew that we were very close, once I arrived, I, I was like asking, are we here? I mean, is it? Is this the place? Are, are, are we done? I couldn't believe because I felt myself really strong at that point. Uh, oh, body, yeah. My, the legs, you it's know, cool. everything. So uh, that was a, 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 a big difference. And and the, the terrain was really uh, sandy. There was an accident, actually. There was a, a, a person that, that on those 160, she just couldn't. Uh, and she was the first, actually, on first place. Uh, kind of, uh, she's sure. from the pro group, uh, pro group, the regional pro uh, group. And she felt an, an open... Uh, she, she ended up opening the her knee with a stone and oh. she had to be, yeah, no, no, it was really almost exposed. Yeah. So it, it was exposed. We were lucky. Uh, a lot of doctors were riding that day and, and we were, we also got help from the Mexican army, which is oh, awesome. strange that, that, that we saw them there, but they were there and they helped her and, and it was terrific. She couldn't keep going. She ended up riding with the guys that uh, they support uh, guys uh, in the four wheel drive uh, cars, but she was able to, to you know, to complete the- uh, Awesome. The, the what about, you mentioned that they had nutrition at the camp, but did you have to carry any nutrition with you? And what did you carry? Because it's the conditions for people that don't know there, it's probably going between dry and hot and then really humid and hot, but probably never exactly. anything other than hot. <laughs> So, <laughs> exactly. uh, what did you carry for nutrition? In, 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 in this group, uh, which is organized by this tequila bike, it's called Tequila Bike. <laughs> the Tequila Bike group, uh, they put together basically uh, the major meals, uh, like the grill, for example, with the steaks and, and hamburgers and everything. They kept uh, basically control of, of that. They, they they carry most of the meals. Uh, tons of water uh, and, and fruits uh, like bananas and orange in, in pieces. So, uh, they were providing the whole route. What I did for myself, uh, having done pretty much half of, of it before, I, I carry, you know, a backpack with water, uh, with electrolyte, uh, electrolyte and water mix. Uh, and I have, a, you know, like Gerber, <laughs> like, uh -huh. like uh, uh, baby, baby food. food. Yeah. The baby food, I kept uh, mango, uh, ma mango and banana Gerbers because they are now they have these envelopes uh, that uh -huh. I could uh, put here in the back. So I, I kept two of those Gerbers, uh, terrific, without sugar added. Uh, that was the secret. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I carry, you know, a small uh, bar of uh, like raw cacao with uh, peanuts. And that was pretty much... Uh, it that's uh, that's what I did, and I did the same thing on the on the following day. Awesome. We uh, the group uh, organized, as I uh, mentioned, the grill. You know, right there, uh, right beside the river, so we were able to have you know a good portion of protein, and and they have some beers, so <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Not many, not many. But Coach, uh, Chad's, uh, Coach Chad is signing up right now for this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> did, uh, what about the equipment side of things? How did your um, How did your bike hold up throughout all this? When When I rode, I, I I rented a bike there and rode it, and the terrain was rough. It was extremely dusty. It was tough. We even had some crashes, but um, so d did your bike hold up well? Did you have to do any repairs? I'm glad that you asked because uh, while I was riding, you could see those bikes that are in not very well. Let's say uh, if you do do not take care of the bike, uh, you know, frequently in those long runs, uh, it pay. Uh, it, that's when it pays off. My bike actually 
I have a beautiful bike. I have a Santa Cruz, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, high tower at uh, 29, and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and it rides amazingly. Uh, but I take care. I take good mm. care of it. Uh, you know, I take I take it to service every uh, every month. So I, I I do things, and I prepare before the ride. I put new tires. So I, I you know I spend mm. some time planning the bike thing, but the the interesting thing is that you see also people that do not uh, do that, and that's and those are the guys that uh, you end up helping uh, because I still carry the whole thing, and you know I have in my in my you know, little bag, you know, something like a first aid kit. I have uh, mm-hmm. I have things for my bike, uh, like a replacements, and I ended up like helping, you know few people here and a um, few people there because they didn't they were carrying bikes that are not up to that level it's quite demanding it's mm. really demanding on especially on the front suspension it's quite yeah. demanding so if it if it doesn't have the services uh, it, it, you might end up suffering uh, or, or not riding as you might like to you know to ride you know? Sure. If you were to do Vallartaso, this this route that you did over again, what would you do differently? Mm, I would do it again, of course. I, <laughs> I, I, I already told them I will go again the, this year. I don't know if they will do the same route. They they might choose another one uh, through a mine town called San Sebastian. Uh, but uh, I will... What would I do differently? Ha, uh, <laughs> Well, one thing that I will do equally, I will keep uh, uh, the training just as I did before with the same level of, you know, of uh, discipline. Because uh, as I mentioned, I was scared to not complete this on the second time. So I, I, I took nine months. I, you know, I did everything like by the book. And one thing that I wouldn't like to do is just to relax myself and think that because I already did it, I, I will be able to do it again uh, and not. So um, instead, I will just train exactly the same. I have to take uh, good care of the bike. And no, if that, that, that would be pretty much it. I One thing that I uh, would like to do differently uh, for sure is on, on the way uh, – on the, especially the first day, I was so concerned that I was not going to make it that I kept like, uh, you know, not stopping, but not uh, not going as fast as I could possibly do or go mm-hmm. down as fast as or, you know, as I could, because I kept, you, you know, thinking, oh, no, I have to I have to uh, be able to make it all the way to now that I see the whole route and and. And I'm, I know I could do it. I don't have to take, you know, to make so much reserves. Yeah, you can uh, go back leave, and enjoy it, right? Exactly. And just leave it a little bit more and I still have to take care. Sure. But uh, <laughs> just leave the bike go. <laughs> yeah. How cool would that be? It sounds like an awesome event. Um, you, you have other events on your calendar now too, uh, different ones. So you're looking at doing your first century. I believe it's your first century. And yes, then first. and then also looking at doing an Olympic try, which is super cool. And I think that you're training for the Olympic try right now. Is that is that correct? Yes. That oh, I cool. put my my event A event uh, an Olympic triathlon. Uh although the century mile uh, event will take long longer in terms of hours. But I, I I already ride more or less a 100 kilometers mm-hmm. uh, in a road bike, so I'm closer in that one. With the triathlon, I still have some work to do because uh, you know after the bike I have to run and and yeah. it takes some <laughs> it takes some some dedication in that one. So that's why I put the Olympic triathlon as a number A. And also I want to do an Xterra triathlon because as I mentioned, I really like mountain bike. And as much as, you know, a triathlon looks very funny and interesting to uh, to me, doing it off-road, it's even even better. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm going for an Xterra one as well. How cool. How cool. If the virus allows us. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it allows, right? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, is there is there a triathlon? I got to ask, is there a triathlon down in Puerto Vallarta, down by Sayulita or anything like that? 
There is a, an external triathlon near, uh, uh, near here, the same state. It's, it's called, uh, it's a mountain town called Tapalpa. That's uh, from the Sterra, like a uh, triathlon uh, serial. And there is uh, there are triathlons around. There is one in Guadala uh, here in Puerto Vallarta, but that's that's tough. <laughs> I was thinking more in La Paz or, or, or Cozumel that are a little bit more like <laughs> flat <laughs> because the, the ones here are, you get up in the mountains and it's really like going like this. So mm. to go the first time, I... I prefer to go little by little. Sure. I was hoping that you were going to say there were a lot of them. Then I could plan like at least travel for like two weeks because I need to acclimatize before I race, of course. And then the race. And of course, you'd need a couple of weeks afterward, right? I mean, it'd only be reasonable. <laughs> so um, this has been so great, for Octavio. Sure. Thank you so much for for doing this. And, and I, I know that a lot of people listening to this just suddenly put uh, an event on their bucket list that they want to do. Uh, but then on top of that too, it's really, uh, thank you for sharing your training process, how you overcame things, what you did and congrats on that huge FTP increase in, in finishing that event. It's super cool. Um, we're going to have an episode with, or a, a, a forum post for this episode, and you'll be able to find all the information you need. There'll also be a blog post on this episode. Uh, so you'll be able to check out additional information. Um, Octavio, will just link you in on that for, on the forum thread. Sure. So then if people have questions, they can get in touch with you there. And, uh, man, I just appreciate this so much. So thank you and, and stay in touch. Let me know how the triathlon goes. Sure. Thank you. And also please say thank you to the rest of the, of the team, because, uh, I, I quite, quite a bit, I enjoy the whole conversation, the whole, all of your podcast and, you know, all of the tips. So please say, and warm regards to everyone there. I'll do that. Thank you.